Welcome to my channel, you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. And for those that did, just sit back and enjoy the tea. If you've been reading the news, you have been either underinformed or in many cases misinformed about what this virus really is. It's a very serious thing. Now, before I go on, just so you know, I have my PhD from Duke University. It's from the Department of Pathology. My specialty was toxicology. So I've studied all of these things. No, I'm not a practicing doctor right now, but yes, I do understand how these things work. And unfortunately, again, the World Health Organization, the CDC, they're very cautious sort of bureaucratic organizations. This is a fast moving situation. So I'm here to cut through the noise and give you the information you really need. To get more updates, please come by Peak Prosperity and you can get a lot of information there. We're updating the site constantly hourly about this particular development right now. As well, we have a place for subscribers who wanna go in a little deeper and get some good advice on what they can do about this. Now, let's rewind. This is a really fast breaking development. We only first found out about this particular strain of this coronavirus. And let me break that word down for you, corona it means crown. And the reason they call it that is if you looked at a, one of these virus particles under an electron microscope, it kind of looks, it's all spiky, so it looks like it's wearing a crown. That's the corona virus. And this one's particularly dangerous because it's only been a month since it's been on our radar screen. It was about mid-December when China first uh, noticed this coronavirus, very quiet about it. It wasn't until the 31st of December before an official notification went out to the World Health Organization. And gosh, already, we're seeing 40 million people now quarantined in their cities in China. It's a really serious thing. Now, why? The first thing you need to understand is this is kind of reads like a, a spy thriller, you know, novel that you might read about a pandemic. Why? Because the things that really confer uh, that dangerousness to a new virus is, one, the human species has not seen it before. So it, our, we haven't had a chance to deal with it. So we don't have this thing called herd immunity none of us have antibodies to this coronavirus. So when it comes out into a population with no natural immunity, it tends to sweep through very vigorously. The second thing is this is a cross species jump. They've already done the DNA sequencing on it and discovered this is a bat virus that went through a snake, picks up some snake virus bits, and now it's crossed into humans. That makes it especially dangerous for a pandemic. Then you need two other factors in there. One is called the transmissivity. It's a R naught or an R zero. It's asking the question, how easy does this jump between people? So if I had it and I walked into a room of 10 people, how many people on average would get that? If you have an R naught greater than one, meaning I have a chance on average of walking into a room full of 10 and one other person catches it, that's enough to sustain transmission. An R naught of less than one, this thing will die out on its own over time. But anything over one is a concern it's thought that this has an R naught of somewhere between 1.5 and 2.4. So this really has a chance to spread and spread uh, pretty strongly. The second big thing we need to know is that this is pretty lethal. The people who've described what is happening, a healthy 23 year old read this full account about what his experience was, just got laid low. Like imagine the worst flu you've had times two, really touch and go with strong medical support. This person pulled through but we're finding that people who are a little bit older and the very young, of course, as usual, are prone to really having catastrophic outcome. This thing has a case fatality rate of around 3%, but we won't know how high it is until all is said and done. I think it looks like early data, it's coming in a little higher than 3%. If it came in at 3% and it came to America and it was as uh, transmissive as the Spanish flu was in 1919, that would translate into about 16 million people becoming critically ill and another two to three million people succumbing to this. It's a very dangerous virus, which is why we get to the thing that really annoys me about this is that it has a really long latency period, meaning if, if you infected me, I would go about five days before I would begin to express any symptoms. It would be another maybe four days before those symptoms were bad enough for me to go, geez, maybe I should go see a doctor. So there's somewhere between a nine and a 14 day window before somebody who, who got, gets this virus would actually present to the medical establishment. During this whole time, they are infective and uh, infecting other people around them. So here's why I get annoyed by this. The doctors know this, the World Health Organization knows this, certainly all the people at the CDC know this, all of the health specialists in the UK know this, in Europe, in Finland, anywhere you want, Asia, Singapore, Japan, they all know this. Now, what would you do if you knew that there were tens of thousands of people infected with this thing 
who were living in a place. And you were gonna have them maybe traveling, getting on little metal tubes, getting in airplanes and traveling to your country. Well, knowing that this has an incubation period where you can't detect any symptoms, I think the responsible thing would be to say no travel. But that's too hard because that would cost a lot of money. So we're not gonna do that. But then maybe there would at least be a quarantine period. All you've been reading about is that the security precautions are what they're doing is taking the temperatures of people as they deplane from ground zero, where this virus is known to be uh, endemic and epidemic right now. They're taking the temperature readings by pointing a little something at people's foreheads, and if you don't have a fever, come on in. Completely ineffective. And they know that, but that's not what's being said. Uh, they are telling you that you are being protected by screening measures at the airport. So you need to understand that. And the other thing is that they've talked about the World Health Organization on the 23rd of January, that's yesterday at the time of this filming, declined to declare this a public health emergency. They said it doesn't quite fit our, doesn't fit all the criteria yet, but oh my gosh, they must've got lawyers on there instead of doctors. Because what they said was to, to classify this as a public health emergency, they need to have somebody outside of China who's got the disease spreading it. And all they had for sure was people with the disease who'd come from China and they didn't have any technical examples of, of cross uh, contamination once they were outside. So they said, technically, it's not a pandemic. So I have to read to you where we are on the WHO, WHO World Health Organization pandemic checklist. Dan, bring this up, because look at this, phase one, if you're in phase one, no animal influenza virus circulating among animals has been reported to cause infection in humans. Er, cross that one out. Phase two, an animal influenza virus circulating in domesticated or wild animals is known to have caused infection in humans and is therefore considered a specific potential pandemic threat. Oops, cross that one out. We're way past that one. How about phase three? Have we made it to phase three? That's where an animal or human animal influenza reassortant virus and that's what we have here, remember? Bat, snake, human. Has caused sporadic cases or small clusters of disease in people, but has not resulted in human to human transmission sufficient to sustain community level outbreaks. Cross er, that one off because we're way past phase three. We're here at phase four on this pandemic checklist where human to human transmission of an animal or human animal influenza reassortant virus able to sustain community level out of virus has been confirmed here in the United States. Health officials in Orange County, California, say a person there tested positive for coronavirus on Saturday after traveling from Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the outbreak. Meanwhile, the State Department is working to get American personnel stationed in Wuhan on a charter flight back to the U.S. Nearly 2000 people in China have contracted the virus, which also has killed at least 56 people. People in China, more than 2,700 others have been effect infected across 13 countries. Five of those cases are here in the U.S. Remy Innocencio has been covering this story from Beijing after leaving Wuhan last week. Remy, how are people there reacting? Sure. Good morning. Well, China's health minister, Ma Xiaowei, has said that he expects infections to continue to rise. And of course, that has everyone here in the country even more nervous. Now, get this. Wuhan and at least 16 other cities with a population of more than 50 million people are still on some kind of transport lockdown. And we spoke to one American stuck in Wuhan, and he says that panic is starting to rise. The biggest problem is I just wish I could get my family off where we need to go to America. American Justin Steese and his wife Ling have lived together in Wuhan for the past year and a half. Just three weeks ago, Ling gave birth to their baby boy, Colm. My biggest fear is that I would go out, get sick not knowing it, and then come home and spread it to Ling and the baby. Steese was a soldier in the National Guard for five years, but his wife doesn't have a U.S. visa yet, and he can't leave Wuhan to finish her paperwork. Otherwise, I would have evacuated with the rest of the people and got my wife and kid out of here. He and reportedly 1,000 other Americans are now stranded as the Chinese government works to contain the deadly virus within its borders. But it's quickly worked its way around the world. This case poses no immediate threat to the general public. 
On Sunday, Los Angeles County officials tried to reassure the public they weren't in danger after two more cases in the U.S. were confirmed, one there and one in Maricopa County in Arizona, all while the number of infections worldwide continues to climb. Back in China, the epidemic has even forced the government to extend the massive Lunar New Year holiday by three days so officials have more time to work and to keep people from contracting and transmitting the virus. At ground zero of the epidemic in Wuhan, excavators are now working around the clock to build two hospitals to treat the infected. And food reserves are being sent in as near empty shelves line supermarkets. But for all the government's efforts, Xi says they're not making anyone feel any better. What the Chinese government is saying, oh, it's calm, resolute. Um, the citizens are actually freaking out a little bit more than normal.